Hey guys, welcome back. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And okay, so we the other week we asked people what uh, kind of like comic book and uh, comic book creation type videos they wanted to see. Yes. And we did have some of you write in, and we had some people ask us about where to get comic books printed. Yes. Because a lot of people don't know where to get them printed. You can't really... I mean, you could go to Kinko's or something. Uh, yeah. they sell Kinko's? They do. Well, I don't know about the Kinko's. I know they have, like, staples. Yeah. And you could do, like, the Xerox, you know, things, the zines, like they did back in the day. I think they do some more binding than that at, like, yeah. staples, but I'm not really sure. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that for a comic book that you intend to sell, though. No. So before we, we get into that, I think we have to talk about the difference between printing processes. Right. There is a difference. There is a difference. So there, and even with the type of comic book you're going to do. So uh, mostly now you've got two different printing processes. Uh, you've got offset printing, which is a traditional uh, printing process where you know, it goes through the big web press and like the big... Uh, printers that you see at like newspapers and magazines mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. That's offset printing. Offset printing, you have to do a uh, quantity because they right. have to set the plates up and everything uh, for your book. And usually there's like a minimum of, you know, 500 to a thousand books, you know, being run on offset. The other uh, kind of printing, which is a more recent thing, thanks to uh, fancy computers and, mm -hmm. and all that, is is uh, print on demand. Yes. Now, print on demand is sort of like a Amazon's Create Space, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, where you can have as little as you know one book right printed, and uh, you know the print quality lately. Uh, in recent years, has actually been very good. But the price is a lot higher the per book. Price is higher per book because, yeah, they're basically running uh, high-quality color copies and then binding those into a book, and it's not as cost-effective as, as doing it uh, via offset. So um, I think first we're going to talk about offset printing, and uh, mostly we're going to talk about... A lot of people get uh, graphic novels printed. Mm -hmm. So again, we want to talk about the difference between... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say something you have to consider, too, is are you printing in full color or are you printing in black and white? Because that's yeah. going to affect price as well. Yeah, color is way more expensive. Yeah. Uh, you know, Really, the only comics now that seem to print black and white are either like archival collections of comic strips or manga. Manga, yeah. Manga especially. But but uh, black and white printing is, is very reasonable compared to color. Full mm -hmm. color printing is expensive. Um, so, you know... When you're printing your comic, usually you're either going to go with a, uh, as we call it, a floppy comic, which is like your traditional 32-page um, saddle stitched, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, a comic, you know, comic book, monthly comic book. You pick them on the stand. That would be that would be uh, a standard comic book. Uh, or you can go with a graphic novel or a trade paperback, which is you know, sort of the uh, the, the bound. You know, it could either be soft cover, hard cover. Um, most of these are done uh, offset. To be honest, you can do print on demand for graphic novels, but it does get very pricey. Yes. So, uh, okay, so we're gonna take you through a couple of different options. Some of these we've used, personally used, mm -hmm. and some of them we haven't, but we've heard good things about. Mm -hmm. Or we've seen samples of. Or whatever. we've seen samples. Yeah. So the first one I'm gonna recommend is actually Print Ninja. They were, well, we actually are. I was gonna tell, let's tell the story about Print Ninja. Go ahead. Tell the story about Print Ninja. Uh, Print Once Ni upon a time. Once upon a time, Print Ninja has been around for a number of years. They did mostly um, like business collateral stuff and brochures, uh, pamphlets. brochures and pamphlets. They did some anime con like booklets and things like that. That's what we looked at first. Yeah. So we were looking back in 2011 to get our first graphic novel printed. And the only options then were uh, a lot of like, um, you know, some, some kind of really iffy publishers. Either it was really, really expensive going to like Canada and having stuff done or... Um, it was dealing with, uh, you know, like overseas printers and uh, now Print Ninja does print overseas, but it wasn't a very easy process. Right, they, they broker it for you, which is, that's another story. We'll, get, we'll just tell them the story. And then So anyway, I contacted um, Print Ninja. And again, this is back in like 2011. And I said, hey guys, I got, you know, we want to get this book printed. Um, you know, we, we like the overseas printing because it's cheaper, but we can't really deal with all the, you know, the import, export, all that. And I see you guys do catalogs and you've done... Uh, you know, like anime con brochures. Can you do comic books? Can you do graphic novels? They'd never done it. No, nope, they we are the Adam and Eve of yeah. the comic books at Print Ninja. <laughs> so. so the um 
the best of my knowledge, uh, the first Shadowbinders graphic novel was the very first thing, very first comic book project they printed. And, and, well, yeah, it was because they didn't even know what the sta stats were for that. We, you had to walk them through like what all the stats yeah. were, how what, what you'd ask for. Because well, actually, Neon used to work in uh, pre press, working on catalogs and things prior mm. to this, so he knew what the what to ask for and what to you know show and what to do, and uh, we did. And then they asked if they could have some books to take to different shows. C two E two, I think. I think the first one they did, yeah, because they're in this Chicago. C2E2, yeah. yeah. And then we sent them some more for another big show uh, yeah. later. New, well, I hooked up with them at New York Comic Con, too. Yeah. And so, yeah, funny story. Funny story. Um, Pretty Ninja does graphic novels now. and um, They have a whole you're welcome. comic <laughs> they have a whole comic book division now doing comic books and graphic novels. And I know they've done some stuff for IDW. They do a lot of the uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns um a lot of uh web comicers so go we have to... all the emails and stuff to show that it was, yeah, it it was, was us. us it was us it was us uh anyway um i can vouch for their quality their quality They're is very good very good the quality is very very good uh the shadow binders books turned out They're fantastic beautiful. and uh, you know their prices aren't terrible either and the thing about print ninjas they do the overseas Printing, but they handle all the shipping and everything. For it was you. so nice because it just comes to your house. Like they, it shows up. Was it UPS or FedEx? I can't remember which. Yeah, I think it was UPS. I think it was UPS also. Yeah. And it, they just take care of it. Now it takes you know a little bit of time, but any place you go to have something like this done, it's mm. going to take a little bit of time. And uh, a few weeks later, it shows up at your house. Boom! Books done. Yeah, they actually showed go. up. They actually showed up earlier than we expected. And the thing about it was. You know, the problem we had before was, I think it was uh, Cross Blue, I think was the one printer. Yeah, Cross Blue. And they around anymore? I'm not really sure if they are or not, but a lot of uh, comic book publishers were using Cross Blue, but the, the problem was, if I recall, uh, one, the prices were higher than were I, higher. I thought they should be for overseas printing, and two, you had to... I think go to, at the time, I'm not sure if it's still the case now, but at the time, I think you had to actually go to the docks and pick the books I up. I know there was a couple of places we, we looked at that you had to go pick them yeah, up. Yeah, and you had to deal with like import, export, Which you licenses can still and all do that, that. You can still go directly to Like Alibaba or yeah, something. Yeah, you can yeah. still do that. Um, if you can do that, more power to you, but you will have to go pick it up at a dock near you and there might be one and that might be great. Um, and it will save you some money so you can do that. But as far as Print Ninja goes, it's really not hard. They'll help you with everything and they've been nothing but great with everything we've ever done. Yeah, and they do, like you can get a quote right on their website, which is good um, for any kind of, you know, graphic. So they do single issues. They do trade paperbacks, graphic novels, and they've got like, I mean, you basically just tell them, uh, you know what the specs are and they walk you through it and they'll give you a price and it yeah it actually works out really well uh for that so you know again this is this is one we can actually vouch for because we've used them mm -hmm. and i know a lot of uh, a lot of people who self-publish use print ninja now. yeah it was so funny we were at cons and the people were like you know you should go talk to print ninja and you look at me i'll look at you and then we laugh yeah it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's like, no kidding you don't say yeah so they're not the only game in town though there are some other printers who are coming into this space too and this is a mix of now i've actually uh, we've talked to mix them before mm -hmm. and they're very very cool and their quality is very very good um we haven't actually printed any projects with them but i can vouch that the samples we got were really pretty killer mm -hmm. and they do kind of a similar thing as print ninja except they do not print their stuff overseas uh most of their stuff is i think they have i know they're based out of the uk but they actually ship from i believe i believe different printing locations around the country around the world so if you order from the u.s i think you will get the books from the u.s but they also do the price calculator and they tell you exactly when you're going to get it. now they'll tell you here depending on your copies whether or not it's going to be digital because they do the kind of print on demand digital mm -hmm. printing or if it's going to be web press so like if you change your you know copies here they give you the option this is a speedmaster uh xl 75 litho heidelberg that is offset um compared to digital you know you can see the price difference digital will actually cost more for a thousand books you know the digital is 952 dollars whereas on the offset it's 468. right which is normal you're paying less per book with offset because you have to do more books so you're you know it's, you're gonna it's, it's a cheaper price to do offset yeah so they um they actually do have i mean uh, for people who have used them again i have never personally used mixum but i have had conversations with them i do think that their samples were really great i think their website's really easy to use uh i can't vouch for 
you know the process though because we haven't used no, them but i have can, heard good things yeah I've heard we've very, seen the very quality good is good the process is pretty good like with print ninja it's pretty easy yeah you can also go to local printers um sometimes you might have one that's near you that actually can do books and you know all the shipping and all that and sometimes it's cheaper sometimes it's not but you can check around and it keeps money local to you yeah and the thing is a lot of uh, a lot of smaller print shops now are actually getting the digital equipment in. I know we have a shop uh, locally that we use for all of our prints mm -hmm. and they have a really high quality color printer. Now they don't do the book binding, um, but like for prints and stuff like that, we get a really good deal right. uh, on it and it's local. We can literally, it's like 20 minutes away. We just go drive right. and pick it up. So we don't have any shipping charges or anything like that. So if you live in a larger area, we have printers that are nearby that maybe could do books. Mm -hmm. I would check with them because sometimes, you know, could, you, they might have a good deal that you, if you don't shipping, it's a better deal. So right, check with right. them too. And then obviously check the quality before you buy anything. Yeah. So, um, those are the two, uh, I would say the two like major options for, uh, offset printing for graphic novels uh, for thicker books, right? I would say, you know, obviously Print Ninja right now is kind of the, the leader in that space. But we can recommend, we, I mean, we have used them the whole way We through. have used them before. I so can vouch we can that vouch they're, for that one. they're good. Uh, mix them. Again, I know their samples are good. I've yeah, talked to them. Yeah, I've seen samples. They're very nice. Yeah, and uh, I know people have had a really good experience with them. I would say check them out if you get a chance and um you know again it's they've got this calculator which is always good so you know exactly how much it's going to mm. cost and you're not surprised you know and if you go through like alibaba or something like that you have all kinds of other fees yeah, associated these guys and, already navigate it yeah they cost a little more but they take care of a lot of it for you yeah so i'm going to give you some other options here uh this one's really interesting so alterna comics we've had peter Samedi from alterna mm -hmm. comics on the show a couple of times they're actually doing a printing partnership program. Now, if you're familiar with Alterna, they used to do graphic novels. I think they still do to some extent, but not like they used to. Mostly they focus on single issues now, and they focus on single issues that are done on a, a higher quality newsprint. So they're not using the glossy paper. They're basically printing comics the way they used to be printed in the, the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And this keeps the costs down. Like it really keeps the cost down. And they've got this printing partnership program um, and their prices are really, really, really low. Uh, like you can get a 32 page comic, 500 comics at 50 cents a piece. Now Alterna, most of their comics, they sell them for, I think like a buck 50, a buck 75. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, you could go get, you know, 500 comics at 50 cents a piece and charge two bucks each at a convention. Yeah, you're making, you know, but 300% profit. Yeah, I mean, that's that's crazy. Um, that's probably the most bang for your buck. And honestly, if you're gonna do floppy comics, you know, and you just wanna move comics, like that's, you can't really beat that. Uh, they do have a setup charge, which is $50. So they will actually help prepare the files, uh, the files for you. But um, yeah, they have their whole thing. I'm gonna definitely put a link to this in the uh, description, I'm gonna put a link to all these printers in the description. But if you're looking for just you know low cost floppies, like that's you're not gonna get a better deal. Mm -mm. I, I I don't. There's no place else you can go and get I mean, comics. Eighty pages is still like less than a dollar each. I mean, an eighty page comic. Now it is on newsprint, but again, so were comics for many many years. They were on newsprint for many years. And if you buy a thousand, if you buy the first five hundred that much, if you buy another hunt five hundred, the price goes down more. So yeah. you know, it's not bad at no, all. No, it's not bad at all. Uh, again, this is if you're looking at doing floppies, this is a great way to get into that and not have to you know uh, mortgage your house mm -hmm. to to you know print your comic book. I mean, really, I mean seriously, fifty cents. That's that's two hundred fifty bucks, three hundred dollars for stuff. You're talking like three hundred bucks for five hundred comics. And sell them for two bucks each in a show. Yeah, you know you're you're gonna make you're gonna make your money back. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that's actually really really pretty good deal. They're easier to store at like five hundred floppies than it is. Oh yeah, five hundred graphic novels. Yeah, Speaking yeah. From experience. Yeah, graphic novels. I know people who have actually put like additions on their house. They've refurnished their basements and everything yeah. just just to store their graphic novels. That's from something else to consider when you need to buy a bunch of books. It, you know, if you have the room to store a, uh, you know. A, a big run of comics that's great if you don't you might want to go with more of a digital you know print on demand type option mm -hmm. which you're going to talk about here in a minute but yeah yeah, yeah. um now kind of the old guard with with digital printing for single issues is kablam 
Kablam has been around for quite a while. Kablam, I, I think they've been around for at least 10 or 12 years. That's a years long now. time. A lot of a lot of the Artist Alley comic books you come across are actually printed by Kablam because they do smaller quantities. Now, mm -hmm. the difference here with Alterna is you're going to have to do a minimum of 500 books. But still, that's not much. That's not like 50 much. Cents a book. That's not yeah. much. Uh, versus Kablam, where you, you, know, you can do much smaller quantities. I think you can even do... I don't even know how what the minimum is. Maybe it's just like one book. Oh, okay. There's a price break at 500. I've actually never used Kablam. I know a lot of people who use Kablam, but we're talking, you know, just the 32 page comic. Kablam is, is $3 and 12 cents. Um, and they, they, that's, that's if, full color though. That's too. full color, but that's digital. Again, this is the difference between digital and offset. Now, Peter's prices, is that for full color or black and white? That's for full color. Oh, well, that's, I, I don't think you can beat I'm, that. This is, I'm Are you pretty sure? Sh yeah. Are you sure it's not black and white? Uh, full color or black, or black and, white. and white. There's no difference in price. Wow. Okay. That, you know what? <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's actually really good. You cannot beat that. No. I, I don't. No, I, again, it's the newsprint. You're not getting the glossy paper. Right. But again, most people who read floppies, especially if they're they're old school For fans. For floppies, I'd say I, you can go with that. I wouldn't. I don't, a trade, no. Novel, you're you, you're going to want you're better paper. paper. Yeah. But just for a monthly, I mean, a $2 monthly, $1.50 monthly. Yeah. It's not bad. It. That's actually a really good deal, you can't Peter. Beat good, it. good job, Peter. Yeah, good job, Peter. Uh, but yeah, Kablam, again, you're talking digital. Now, these are on Glossy. I've seen Kablam books. I know a lot of our, our friends use Kablam mm -hmm. for like just to put you know, show Kablam books together. Books, yes. Uh, but they're not cheap, you mm -hmm. know, because they're doing digital because it's glossy stock. You're right. talking. You don't have like a limit. You don't have like, you don't, you, you could buy like five, but you're going to pay more per book. Yeah. Now, they give you a price break if you let them put an ad on the back of your book. I've seen uh, many people do. Yeah. It's like 50 cents or 60 cents, but you're still talking $3. So, 32 page book, it paying $3 plus a book. Now, there is a price break if you buy more. But you're still going to have to charge at least five bucks. Well, what's the price break if you buy like 500 Psych Curiosity? I don't know. Like 500. I've never used Kablam, so this is new to me. So let's. It let's... Drop, what's it drop yet or no? You have to um, reset. Oh, 249. Okay, so it's 249. But you're still going to have to charge four or five dollars for a comic book at that, you know? Yeah. Now, if you go. Now, Print Ninja, you know, they also do single issue comic books, but I think it winds up being. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what their single issues are like. Yeah. We always use them for like trade paperbacks, graphic novels, well, here, that kind of thing. Here's 250, 250, uh, 32, 32 page. page books. Let's calculate. Up, oh, I need to do something. Let me see here. Up, oh, no proof. There we go. We'll just do it that way. And we're talking uh, 519 each. But if you go up to 500, yeah, you can see there's only like 100. There's not much of a difference. Right. So we go up to 750, $1,400 or $1.89 each. So. But again, though, this is where you're starting to get, they're going to be on the kind of the glossy stock. Yeah, and they're going to be, you know, it seems like a lot more money, but you're getting 750 bucks. Right. Uh, to get the lower price. But so. not everybody's going to be able to sell 750 comic books. No, so if you're. It took us forever to sell what we had, and we yeah. had a couple thousand, and we yeah. just now like ran out. So if you're looking, you know, just to get some books for Artist Alley or whatever, you know, small runs, uh, you know, Kablam probably isn't a bad option. Mm -mm. For you, just be aware that you're going to pay more and you're going to have to charge your customers more you know but you're not also not gonna be stuck with you know 500 or a thousand comic books yeah. you can't sell trust me it's hard to find places for all those yeah so kablam that is another option create space now create space is basically gone it's it's been rolled into amazon media on demand we have used create space before yes. um our very first uh collections of our web comic we did via create space yeah so that way we could, you know, just print them as people ordered them, which was nice because we got our our uh, ISBN number and everything through Amazon, and we didn't have to do anything. We just oh, you upload. Should explain the ISBN number. Okay, the ISBN number is if you're going to do graphic novels and you're going to sell them or you want them in libraries, it's very important that you get an ISBN number, which is your uh, basically your identifier mm -hmm. for the book. Libraries use them, bookstores use them. Uh, Amazon, you can get one through Amazon, but if you print the book outside of Amazon, outside of CreateSpace, you have to get another one. Right. But anyway, the the um, the CreateSpace was nice because we, you just pretty much just uploaded your file and then if people wanted to buy the books, you just told them to go buy them on Amazon. Right. And then you didn't have to do anything. No storage, nothing. They would print them and ship them. Now, the problem, the problem with Create, now the quality is very good. It is very good. Uh, they don't do hardcovers. No. Uh, the quality is good, but they're expensive. Um, and the profit margins are not good. So for us, I think we did... 
we had like a couple of like 64 page books and we wound up having to charge people like 10 bucks mm -hmm. for those books because that's the only way we can make profit and now even you, that it wasn't much it wasn't much it was like a buck or two and if you have them do it directly you even get less money yeah yeah so yeah because that's the thing if you buy your own copies that's going to cost you one rate if you just sell them through amazon and they they just ship them out to people right. and you'll have to play around with kind of the the uh the margins on it but you might wind up charging people like 15 bucks for like a 96 page book and i don't know if you're going to move many books mm -mm. at many books at 15 bucks you know uh for 96 pages so that's something to consider but it is nice in the fact that you really don't have to do much other than just get the files ready and just sit it out there. And for web comics, it's nice because sometimes, you know, people, if they want a hard copy, they can just order it through Amazon. You don't have to deal with any of that shipping and, and mm -hmm. all that garbage. Um, so that that's actually pretty cool. That is an option and it's all integrated with Amazon. So, you know, and with now with Kindle, right. so you upload the Kindle version and Comixology. So you can have your, com your book on Comixology on Kindle and then offer people a paperback you know, right. that they can just buy. And you right still through. can put your book on Kindle without using your. Oh yeah, yeah. Now the thing you can do is if you do do like an offset printing run, you can send the books to Amazon. Yeah, and we did that. Okay, so what we did when we did the Print Ninja books because our books wound up costing. Now they were uh, the cover price. What they were, let's see, about 164 pages, I think, and they wound up being 15, 20 dollar books. We paid through Print Ninja at that time. Prices have gone up. I think we paid about four or five dollars a book. So what we did with Amazon is we actually shipped all of our books or most of our books. A bunch of books. A bunch of them, like boxes full of them to Amazon. We set up a, a, a seller account on Amazon, shipped the books to an Amazon warehouse. And then when people would buy them on Amazon, they would just pull them out of the inventory. But we could, our profit margins were, because we were making like 10 bucks a book mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, which is nice. And then again, Amazon took care of all the, the payment processing and it's just like, oh, somebody ordered a book, hit, hit, you know, uh, send and they would send them the book through uh, prime shipping, just like, you know, anything else. Then of get... course they took the cost up for shipping. Right, right. But we still, our profit margin was much better on that than it would have been to use create space mm -hmm. for the same thing and only make like a buck or two a book. Right. So you made more money and then you still can put your book on Kindle if you want to. Right, you know, right. Which we did. Digital copy. Yeah, it was actually right. out there on Kindle. But this way you get more money per book and you can do an offset printing run, which a larger run and then, it, but still have it fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there are other ways to do it. Now, again, for that, though, we had to have a business set up. Mm -hmm. We had to have, you know, do all the stuff, set up a seller account with Amazon. But it was nice because the book was listed, you know, in the, the books. Just like, I mean, we were on toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, you know, Scholastic and First Second. And mm -hmm. we're actually, at, at one point, we were actually outselling a lot of the books from major publishers because it was word of mouth, you know, with our audience. And we were telling them to go buy an Amazon. And then we also got, we got the double dip because we got the Amazon affiliate money, too. So we would give them an affiliate link. We would make like a buck off the, the affiliate link or whatever for selling the book. And then we also got all the profit. Right. So we know, got so, lost less yeah. when they shipped it. You yeah. Know, kind of which thing. is pretty cool. Uh, now, another one here as far as print on demand. And I can't, I've got samples. And I think the samples are very good for the price is Ingram Spark. Ingram's one of the biggest book distributors out there. They do hard covers. They do hard covers. Um, and their prices are not bad. Now, they do have different uh, print qualities. They have a, um, uh, I guess a so-so print quality, which is pretty decent color. And then they have their high quality, which is more on par with like create space. Mm -hmm. I would say the standard print color is more probably what you'd see on like a newsprint mm -hmm. type thing. And then is more the premium paper. Um, you know, this is good too, because they work with, since they're Ingram, they work with a bunch of bookstores. So you get your book printed through them, published through them. You can actually get it into bookstores provided there are going to be bookstores left, <laughs> you know, right. but it does help because you know, they help walk you through that uh, process. Now I did find one thing I will say about Ingram and I did like their samples. We have samples. I thought they were very good. Uh, I find their site to be very confusing. I find it to be very confusing mm -hmm. compared to, you know, how create space used to be and how uh, print ninja and Mixum are. I, th I think their process is kind of confusing because I think they're more used to doing like prose books right. than comic books. But it can be done, and I know people who have done comics through them, and they've actually turned out pretty good, and I've, I've seen them at shows. Um, but again, it's 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 quantity in this case, too, you know, the higher the quantity. Uh, okay, so anything you want to add? 
um, for people who who aren't doing comics and just want to do printing their books, you can use these places mm -hmm. to do just plain books. Any too. kind of book. A book is a right. book. Right. So that you don't have to think, oh, I'm doing prose. I'm not doing a comic. Uh, where do I go? You can use the same places. Yeah, except for Alterna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll turn yeah. on now. But I'm saying, you know, the other places you want to do novels or whatever, they handle that as well. Yeah, actually, Create Space or Amazon was designed mostly to offer people the ability to to publish their Kindle books in the paper version. That's mm -hmm. kind of how it got started, and then people started using it for comic books. And we might have actually been one of the first ones to use it for comics too. Come to think of it, uh, because they offered full color and a lot of there people. You. Breaking boundaries. No, well, no, <laughs> we were just like we're trying to find better ways to do. Oh, things. For sure, Print Ninja. We were the ones that, that yeah. kind of did that one, but. Um, well, people were asking us about the Create Space books. And again, this is back in like 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wow, these look really good. And they were print on demand. So I think a lot of, you know, especially web comics creators yeah. who didn't maybe need a lot of, you know, physical books were like, yeah, this is a good option for me, you know. Um, but yeah, any kind of book. I mean, it's just, it's it's paper. It's, you know, whether it's color or black and white or whatever. Right. You know. So um, there you go. I hope that that answered some questions. Yeah. And it is, you know, surprising because like until you start looking into this stuff, a lot of people don't know where to go to get stuff printed. No. It's like, you know, I mean, it's not like you can just ask your friends unless they're making comic books. Like, hey, where do you get your books printed? Even people working in comics don't even know where their books get printed. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean... There, there are several places in Canada that print comics for a lot of the publishers, but they they deal in such large quantities that right. most people are not going to be able to match the prices no, and things. Yeah. Not unless you're buying hundreds of thousands of books at a time or something. Well, not anymore. Tens of, <laughs> ten, tens anymore, of thousands. Tens of thousands. Ten thousand plus books. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to to add. No, um, so there's our there's our our how to do printing. Yeah, and th um, this will update like every year, I think. It yeah, it'll all change all the time. We kind of stay on top of it. Um, we'll try to answer other questions as we get a chance to, but we want to do more comic stuff. So, yeah, we want to help you help yourself make comics because we need more people making comics, uh, especially with you know the mainstream industry kind of uh, dying. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I, we, it, it's going to be up to indie creators, I think, to to make comics going forward. So, all right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, and more. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.